Hello! So here we are with the section 1 of AMC 2018 paper for middle primary. So in this section we'll be solving questions number 1 to 10 and for the rest of the questions I'll have link at the end of the video. Alright, let's start. Question number 1. What is double 4? Double 4 is easy. Yeah, let me get my pen. Double, pe double 4 is 4 and 4, that is 8. Easy peasy. Which pattern has exactly 10 dots? Now you can count manually or you can go, this is 3 by 3, that's 9. Um, I can actually easily easy see that the 10 is here. 2 times 5 is 10. Which of the following is the same as 6 tens? And three ones. Six tens means sixty. Three ones means three. So the answer should be sixty-three. Now is the point of just um, reading that is right there. A sixty-three. That's the answer. When I add eleven and another number, I get nineteen. So eleven plus some number gives you 19. What is the other number? Now 11 and what more will make 19? That is 8. 8 is the correct answer which can go here. Question number 5. What is the diameter of this coin? Now they have shown a diagram and Remember, they're not asking radius, they're asking diameter. So you have to start from here. They have placed the ruler at the correct point, and you have to think about the reading here. I can easily see that that's 20 millimeters. It's written that it's measuring in millimeters, and there are five little marks more. So this is 25 millimeters. The answer is D, 25 millimeters. All right, let's go ahead. Question number six, which one, which of these numbers is closest to 2008? Now we are looking for a number closer to 2008. Now 190 is too far away. Uh, 200 is eight away. Let's see if you have a closer number. Oh, 2005 is just three away. 2006, seven, eight, three away from 2008 so of course 2000 cannot be 200 cannot be the answer let's check for 210 210 is just actually two away so the right answer would be 210 which is just two away from 208 all right so we are on question number seven this is quite an interesting question let's read it kate made this necklace from alphabet beads she put it on the wrong way around showing the back of the beads what does it look like now it should look like this but she has put it the wrong way so remember when we look at it from behind at the wrong way imagine kate the alphabet's hanging up in the air and you going the other side and trying to read it remember the k will not go first it would be the e that will be visible from the first side so that would appear as the first letter so let's see how many options do we have with e as the first so we have a with e in the beginning we have c and we have e these three are the ones which have e in the beginning so these are our three probable options so b and d cannot be the right answers but they all have e now let's have a look at the orientation now if you look closely the e looks like e from our angle from the correct side but when we move to the other side the e these legs of e's would be the first to appear Imagine it hanging, turn it over. So these legs would be at the end of the rope. So they would appear first. So exactly this would not be the orientation that we are looking for. The correct orientation would be this. This is the correct orientation of E that we can see from the other side. Let me just mark it. Yes, this would be the correct orientation. And actually that solves our question we have found our answer a but just to check if you want to keep going you can have a look at t t does not change t remains t a remains a but k again look at k uh let me just remove it so that it's not confusing anymore all right let's just focus on the k now again this end of k 
this long line should be at the end of the rope. So the K will not look like a K from behind. It will look like an inverted K, which is here, which is here. All right. Have a close look at how the position of K is. And just like we said, we agreed with the E here. We are agreeing with the K here. So we have found our answer, which is A. A is our correct answer. All right, this is a good one. Each day, tours of Parliament House and the National Museum beget, begin at 8.30 a.m. So they we can see they both start at 8.30, shown in the clocks as well. The tours for Parliament House leave every 15 minutes. They are, they are leaving at 15 minutes. And the tours for the National Museum leave every 20 minutes. I can see that here. How often do the tours leave at the same time? So for finding out the same time we have to just note down the first few times and see which times will be the same for both the tours so let's work on the parliament house first the parliament house starts at 8 30 and it leaves every 15 minutes so the next tour of course 15 minutes later would be 8 45 15 minutes later would be nine o'clock another 15 minutes 9 15 Another um, another tour, 9.30, another one, 9.45. We will do the next round if we need to. Let's think about National Museum. National Museum starts at 8.30 again, but they go every 20 minutes. Now, this is a little bit more calculation, but I, I know you can do it. 8.30, 20 minutes later, what would be the time? 8.50. 8.50. And now 8.50, when is the next tour? You have to add 20 more minutes. We know 10 more minutes and it will be 9 o'clock. So 10 more minutes after that, it will be 9.10. Another one, another 20 minutes. The hour doesn't change. 10 and 10 more minutes is 30. And we found our answer. We can see that in these, none of the other times matched apart from the starting time. Sorry. The starting time was the same in both. And after that, none of the other times match until we reach 9.30. And if we keep going on, we will see that after every one hour, we will have the same time for both of them. So in our options, A, every 5 minutes, every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every 45 minutes. No, our answer is every 60 minutes. We started at 8.30 and they found the same time at 9.30, which was one hour later. So our correct answer is every, oh no, sorry, not this one. Our answer is E, every 60 minutes. All right, let's move to the next question. Question number nine. The children in class 3P voted for their favorite pets. Sally recorded the results in a column graph, but forgot to draw the column for cats. Let's have a look. So we have the column for fish. Here are the number of children who voted for fish. Here is for cats, which she forgot to draw. We have dogs and we have rabbits. We have columns for all other animals except for cats. Let's look at the information. There are 29 children in the class and everybody voted just once. How many children voted for cats? So we have to think about the cats, although the bar is missing. Now we can find that information by looking at other. For fish, how many children voted for fish? You can see there are four children who voted for fish. Cats, we have to find out. Dogs, how many ch children voted for dogs? There are 14. How many children voted for rabbits? That is three. Now we can add up all these numbers, 14 and four and three, and that is 17 and four is 21. So 21 children opted for fish, dogs, and rabbits, but there are 29 children in the class and every child voted once. So that means there are eight more children 29 take away 21 is 8. There are 8 more children who voted and there's just cats missing. That means 8 children must have voted for cats. And this is our answer. D. 
All right, let's move to question number 10. Which of the following is a whole? Now, there are four options, and we can go through each option. If you're very good frac with fractions and you can visualize fractions, just reading them will give you the answer. If you want some help, you can draw the diagrams to help you out. Let's look at question number 10. Um, which of the following is a whole? The first answer is one half plus two quarters. Let's draw a half. My drawing is not so good. One half is this one, and two quarters look like these. They're not to scale. And actually, I think they join together to make a whole already, A. But let's go on B and check the answer again. But answer B is two quarters plus two halves. So if I have two quarters, two quarters, and two halves, that's another half, that's another half, that's too many. I can, I know that two halves join together to make one whole already. So B cannot be the answer. C, let's have a look at the C. Three quarters plus one half. If we have one half already, three quarters will be too many. We have two quarters and then one quarter will be left behind. We will not need that one quarter more. So C cannot be the answer. D, one half and one quarter. Just from the diagrams we have seen, one half, let me erase some of it. This is what I'm drawing for D. So if we have a half and just one quarter, that's not enough. That's less than a whole. So D cannot be the answer. Of course, we found our answer in the first go, but we were just ch checking A is our first. A option is correct. One half and two quarters will make a whole. All right. So this is the end of section one. I will up here is the link for the next section, which will go on for questions number 11 to 20. All right. See you. Bye bye.